This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Ballad of a Soldier from 1959, directed by Gregory Chakray. The tagline for the film, from the very pages of life itself. And the is that accurate? synopsis, uh, yeah, and the synopsis here from Letterboxd, during World War II, Ernest Young Russian soldier, Alyosha Shvartsov. What was that again? Shvartsov. Is rewarded with a short leave of absence for performing a heroic deed on the battlefield. Feeling homesick, he decides to visit his mother. Due to his kind-hearted nature, however, Alyosha is repeatedly sidetracked by his efforts to help those he encounters, including a lovely girl named Shura. In his tour of a country devastated by war, he struggles to keep hope alive. So, uh, this is a first-time watch for me. I was actually pretty well completely unfamiliar with this movie. I had no idea what it was, uh, but when I read the synopsis, getting ready for watching it, I was like, wait a minute. Are you kidding me? Within, like, what, a couple of movies, uh, cranes are flying to this. Mm -hmm. We got two movies covering, like, essentially the same type of story. That's weird. Um, It's almost intentional. Almost intentional. In fact, Mm -hmm. uh, when I was reading about Battle of Soldier, I guess it... Um, cranes are flying and this other one called like uh, the fate of man or fate of Mm -hmm. a man Uh, they're part of like this like kind of cultural exchange in the 60s of like Mm -hmm. uh, Russian cinema with American when they were like on better terms during um, the the Khrushchev years Um, and yeah so both these movies I guess are kind of presenting this humanist view of uh, the faceless Russian menace I guess and saying hey we're people just like you and here's like examples of our cinema demonstrating that uh, mm-hmm. showing that, hey, World War II sucked for everybody. So, yeah, uh, Ballad of a Soldier. Uh, it's kind of like the flip side of The Cranes Are Flying, I guess, because instead of like kind of seeing specifically the uh, what the war was like at home, this is like the on the on the war front, like at the, on the go, on the go. And then like kind of the, the March back, which I guess kind of falls into kind of the, one of the more notable aspects of world war two in Russia's side, which was like the pushback that they got, uh, as Germany pushed, pushed, pushed and pushed them all the way to the edge. And then they had to fall back because you don't mess with Russia in winter. Um, and so this kind you of don't like mess with Russia all year round, baby, all year round. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So they you, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have, uh, yeah. Alyosha who you get this like really tense, uh, opening scene of mm-hmm. him out on, actually, so it actually doesn't open up there. It opens up with these like beautiful, like, uh, picturesque images of a mother waiting in a like field looking at this like empty country road waiting for her son to return to her a narrator informs us that um that she's like waiting for her son he'll and she'll never see him again and stuff like that and you're like oh well this is going to be some grim business and um and then we get cut to like the battlefield and uh alyosha and uh, a comrade they're uh they're in the trenches, uh, facing mm-hmm. off against those legendary uh, German tanks that mess you up, and they're very hard to take down. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, they're under fire. He starts running as you any sane person would do when being chased down, literally chased down by a tank, uh, which is like a, a fantastic scene. Like I was like trying to think about movies that I've seen that have like that same imagery, and like it really come across that way where it's like whoa. And it's like they're almost sadistically chasing him down too, because they could like dispatch him if they wanted, but they're like, no, we're gonna run this guy down. But he's able to uh, get into a position with just the right shot and take this thing down uh, from continuing after him. And then he mm-hmm. not only does that, he, he uh, pulls it again, shoots up another tank with a, I guess, like an anti tank gun. And uh, that's not a real thing. I yeah, I, I believe it is. <laughs> That's a pretty powerful uh, rifle he was using. Yeah, but this is sci-fi. Oh, the, the fictional World War II with yeah. the Russians. I see. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so we get this scene where it's like, oh, yeah, he, and then uh, they're able to like, he's able to turn back these two tanks and then the barrage hits and then chases off the other tanks. Uh, he's something of a hero. And uh, he's like, oh, hey, good, great job. And he's like, oh, mm-hmm. hey, instead of like, 
I can't remember what he's initially offered by his commanding officer. Some like meager thing or like something like, oh, hey, you get like it's... some more pay or more vacation days or something like that. But he's like, oh, can I just go, go home and see, see my mom? I, I want to mm-hmm. help her like work on the roof. And it's like, oh, like, hey, you know, we're all making sacrifices here. You know, like we all can't just go mm-hmm. home wherever we want. But then everyone's like, oh, this guy doesn't, he just wants to go home and help his mom work on his roof. It's <laughs> like, I guess we can uh, swing that. You can go take uh, a couple extra days, take the train, mm-hmm. go see your mama. And he does just that. And this kid, this Alyosha, so the guy who's playing him, he's like like an amateur actor. He's like a 19-year-old kid playing the age mm-hmm. that he is. Um, he's like, comes off pretty well. I don't, I'm mm-hmm. not a native Russian speaker. I don't know, can't speak to his uh, accent, but the performance came off really well. And that's the same for uh, Shura. Uh, I guess the, mm-hmm. what winds up being kind of like the pseudo love interest in the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they're both like just people they cast and I think it worked out really well here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so you kind of just follow uh, Alyosha as he's making his way across the uh, war torn landscape. That is uh, Russia at this point in time. Um, you see him kind of meet up with, uh, across or go across paths with a, uh, a wounded soldier who's being sent home cause he's, uh, lost his leg and, uh, he's going through the usual, Oh, I just lost my leg depression that I think is pretty reasonable <laughs> to be that going old through. chestnut. Hey, you know, hey, uh, best years of our lives. It's like, that's the whole story of like returning soldiers as amputees and returning home. Um, uh, and, but in that nope. movie, it's more like horrifying your wife with your like mechanical appendages, and she's like, "Oh Jesus!" Uh, <laughs> this movie just kind of like lightens up on that aspect, and uh, yeah. kind of it's like, but they do leave you with that that moment of him clopping down the uh, the train track with the, the crutches. Mm-hmm. That's like mm-hmm. it, it drives home that mm, maybe things aren't as like great as like you like to think, even though her face is like so ecstatic that he's alive at all, which I guess is like uh, this thing. It's like, Hey, even if this is the case, don't lose hope. It's like someone back there loves you kid. Um, mm-hmm. So you kind of like, it, so this becomes like a side thing. Uh, there's a scene where uh, the, the, the amputee, he's just like, I'm going to go somewhere else. I can't see my wife. She doesn't want anything to do with me. She's, she's got a life. We were like on the outs anyway. And uh, he, t- he spills his guts to this total stranger. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, like, the, the girl behind the, like, uh, the Western Union uh, counter, she just, like, just cusses him out, saying, you selfish piece of shit. You should go home and see her. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I guess. <laughs> and he does. And things kind of work out okay in that front. Um, mm-hmm. But, of course, we get, like, side side adventures. as Alyosha's constantly trying to do the right thing and be a good guy. Um, and not in like the current good guy kind of way, but actually a decent human not being. Not a nice guy? Not a nice guy. Uh, cashing in his nice guy card. No, mm-hmm. it's like him. He's just trying to see his mama. And uh, so, yeah, he eventually uh, takes a train, riding it out. Uh, it's like a military train. He shouldn't be on there, but he missed another train helping out all these people. <laughs> and uh, there's like a this real asshole young soldier who's just giving him a rough time saying, oh, I'm really doing a favor. My soldier, like we're my uh, commanding officer. He really is a tarred ass. And if I get, <laughs> uh, get in trouble, maybe you ought to give me some uh, cans of meat. I mean, that's what I often ask for people from, for like a, a bribe is cans of meat. Isn't that uh, what the Patreon is set up as? Essentially. Like, uh, like one tier is one can of meat. And then like the gold <laughs> tier is like you buy us all the meat yeah. in cans. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, all that prim. <laughs> so uh anyway he winds up on that train in the hay and then sure winds up showing up there we get a little bit of like oh no he's gonna rape me but he's not really it's a miscommunication it's real that's a great meat cute um and then he does kind of like push in a little bit uh in that way that men apparently do in close quarters can can you describe what that looks like uh, to the that, people here listening and not watching, what does that push in look like? Um, it's like a man who's just like dead eyed, <laughs> mouth kind of like half open, and just push. <laughs> and he's moving and like whatever f- framing exists in real life, they're just mm-hmm. like moving closer towards something. And uh, it's like, uh, is is this guy going to work through the no? Uh, I, I hope not. And then uh, he's not. He's kind of like, you know, he's just like a little hormonal, I guess. He's like, I haven't seen anybody for a while, mm-hmm. and uh, you're a pretty lady. How about it? And she's like, no, I've got a fiancé. I, I can't do that. So uh, they're hanging out. Um, and, yeah, they, 
again, some more, uh, they're, they're kind of starting to fall in love, RJ. They're starting to like get into one another and it's, uh, beautifully photographed. Uh, again, like, it's kind of like a, it's, it's not, it's no cranes or flying as far as like that, like incredible cinematography. That's just like knock your socks off. Like, wow, this looks amazing. Uh, but this Mm -hmm. movie's got some, like some amazing shots and some very Mm -hmm. great, uh, some very nice photography going on. And it's just like, I don't know, I think this movie is really good. Um, mm-hmm. it, I think it's ridiculous how underseen it is, but I'm not surprised because, I mean, mm-hmm. if we weren't doing this podcast, neither of us were watching Ballad of a Soldier. Um, and I don't know, it's just because it's like, oh, it's it's 1959 Russian cinema, and I don't know, it's just like not like on the top of anybody's list, but it's like unmistakably, like un- inarguably a really great movie um, mm-hmm. and should be seen by more people. Uh, and I'm really glad I got to watch it because I think more people should check it out. Um, I don't know. (laughs) Hey, hey, RJ, what what did you think of Ballad of a Soldier? Um, I, uh, I don't have any fun jokes for you, Jarrett. No. I thought I had some. Uh, I didn't, I, uh, I opened my book when we sat down here and I only had two notes and I was like, uh uh-oh. I was like, did I not finish that movie? Because I was like, did I forget? But I think it was what you were talking earlier. It was like time went by pretty fast when you even had to check. You're like, oh, shit, did I watch the movie this week? And uh, I don't think that's a knock against this movie. Uh, A lot of times when we don't take notes, it's usually because we enjoy the movies. Uh, And I did enjoy Ballad of a Soldier. Sometimes when we have too many notes, Jarrett, it's because we didn't like the movie. You know what I mean? Well, sometimes. (laughs) uh, It swings both ways. Yeah, just like us. Uh, so yeah, uh, this movie was, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it's kind of just to like echo chamber what you said a little bit. Uh, it's got good cinematography. Uh, there's some, there are a few real nice shots. Uh, there's not like, I don't think there's anything like that's great that really stands out. Like Cran- Cranes Are Flying had a couple Ooh. of those, like those anti-tank spikes and like some of those she- scenes, I was like, yeah. Uh, and this one had a couple really good ones, but nothing there's, that like. There's that one though. There, it's like the uh, the whole buildup of them like kind of falling in love, and like her hair, like mm-hmm. her like her golden hair and the train, like they're kind of getting closer, but they never kiss. You never get that like the the makeout mm-hmm. scene that. Uh, but so yeah, it's you like, would want the makeout scene. No, I, I don't want the makeout scene because mm-hmm. it's just it's like oh, it's that. But they don't never show it. They just build up to it of them like getting closer to one another, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they don't go down that route. I actually, I kind of really liked the scenes with the mom at the very start, just kind of like waiting on the roads and the cliffs. I thought those were pretty nice, uh, very well shot scenes. And uh, the other thing that I like too is um, like this one shows a little bit of like, like, and by a little bit, I mean like one minute of like war scenes, action with the tanks. I thought some of that was kind of cool. You have that nifty little scene where like the camera goes inverted when he's running away from the tank and it follows him but then the camera like flips up and he's like running up the screen you yep. know what i mean yeah so that's a, a fancy little trick uh but yeah it's got good cinematography uh i kind of liked how casual this movie was uh because going in i was like man this movie's gonna be a bummer like i thought it was gonna be real sad and depressing uh but it was kind of fun it was like forrest gump it's like this dude who just kind of stumbles upon all these these situations and these uh, these people, and they kind of they always get him into trouble. Jarrett, he's gone gumping by, by gumping, yeah, by gumption. Uh, so I kind of like that because it was it was a little lighter, and not that the hard stuff, that heavy stuff, isn't good, but it was nice to have kind of a movie like this where it had more of more of like an uplifting kind of like lead and the things that were happening weren't complete horse or like complete shit raining on them. Like in cranes are flying where you just feel bad the whole time for the leads. Uh, but that said, like all of his side missions, uh, I think that kind of, they did a really good job of showing side what missions. like <laughs> his side missions, like showing like, like what some of the the realities were like the uh, the guy who was missing his leg and then later uh the lady who shacked up with a new man and he takes that soap back and he's like I'm taking this soap oh yeah cuz you don't deserve it so like his side missions you see a lot of those like the downers 
uh, in the realities of the war and people, I guess. But uh, him, he, you you could root for him. He was like a really nice guy. And like cranes are flying. We're, we're going to make connections because it was so recent. Yeah. Uh, you rooted for those leads too. But at the same time, it was like so much bad stuff was happening to them. You were just like, oh, man. Uh, but in this one, you were just kind of rooting for him the whole time. You're like, yeah good job man you're uh, you're doing the right thing uh and i think this movie has a really good uh i wrote the the only two notes i had were um some pretty nice tanks because there are some pretty nice tanks at the start uh and then patriotism is best comrade uh because i feel like this movie has that message where a lot of it is about like doing the moral thing where it's like what's the right thing to do here like when he gets found out on the train and the guy's like kind of shitty to him he's like give me all that canned meat but then the higher up guy is like what are you doing here and he sees that the guy was like a war hero and he's like you're gonna take a he's like you're gonna take this war hero's canned meat Mm -hmm. be a piece of shit uh so it's like they kind of emphasize doing like the morally right thing uh but then at the same time there's a lot of I, I kind of got the talk like not like um, not like warmongering type stuff or like patriotism things, but where they're just like, yes, you should do what's right for the country. It's like that is the thing to do, brother. So I, I thought it had a little bit of that, too. But it's it's not laid on like too heavy or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have like it's weird. Um, it's like I said, I, I couldn't remember if I watched it because I had so few notes. And I I honestly don't have a ton to talk about it, uh, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was a good show, and I'm glad I watched it. Like you said, it's good that we are doing the creep thing because I would have likely never watched this in my life otherwise. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't have a ton to say about it, even though uh, I did enjoy it quite a bit. I thought it was a good show. Yeah, I oh. mean, so I mean, uh, when I was watching this movie, like there was like thoughts that crossed my mind, uh, and it should be one that comes to mind when watching these war movies of like putting yourself in these situations of like, what if I had to go off to war? And because there was like a period of time, I think in our life where we never had to think about that. But I don't mm-hmm. know. Some days, uh, it's like, hmm, or is like that a uh, kind of a, a, like safety that world that we live in, our neck of the woods? Is that like a thing that's just like not going to be like, oh, it's maybe not going to always be this pristine way? And it's like, what if these are things that I have to consider hap- uh, happening to me? Um, or will I even come to that? Will we just get wiped out in a blast? <laughs> and it's like, what if we have to like go fight in some grueling conflict? And it's just like, oh yeah, that would be like absolutely horrible because it's like you're just kind of a. Uh, handing yourself over to whatever happens and you can be like, Oh, I'm doing great. And then you're dead and, and it's mm-hmm. no fault of your own. It's just what happens. And, uh, that's like kind of like what, uh, like between cranes are flying and watching this, like, cause you never find out what happens to, uh, Alyosha, right? You just know that like he goes back to the front. He rushes home. He like, uh, there's a big, like, big dramatic movement of him like trying to find his mom he's only got a little bit of time there's this asshole who's like i'll give you a ride but i'm, I'm gonna get shot i'm gonna, i'm gonna get arrested here if i like spend any more time with you kid and um so he gets to go home see his mom for like two minutes which is like either like the uh, a real like blessing or it's like mm-hmm. actually makes things worse because it's like oh i wasn't missing you that bad but now that you're here it's even worse and then it's like oh and now i'm never going to see you again so all we have are those two minutes it's very bittersweet rj um you know what else is bittersweet is when you're doing a podcast with your pal and uh you do it out of a shared mutual respect for movies and then you make a comment just a genuine thing like you didn't think the cinematography was great, but you thought it was good. And then you get your phone buzz because <laughs> your pal, your chum, goes to the social media for said podcast's account and calls you out on their opinions of a movie. <laughs> and you're doing this while you're recording. And usually you, you shouldn't look at your phone, but it's like, oh, that's weird. What is this update about the Criterion Creeps? Is it going to be relevant to the pod? And then you look at it and you're like, bittersweet 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 to say the least so uh that's uh that's all a plot point in ballad of a soldier so i didn't just go off on a tangent here but uh you know sometimes a current topical fast real life stuff happens and you have to adjust any uh any thoughts about uh 
that that sequence, RJ, and its bittersweetness. What do you mean, which sequence? These uh, scenes that you're showing me here? No, yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm, I'm talking about uh, like him, uh, like the, the fact that it's like him coming home and like basically his mom oh, is yeah, to experience I feel like it. Would it. Be worse. Yeah, but, and it's uh, weird, right? I, but at I the same know. time, it's like, what is it? And then it's like, because at that point in my mind, I was like, well, at the beginning of the movie, we're told that he never sees his or his mother never gets to see him again. Mm-hmm. But then they do see each but other. They do, yeah. and you're so like, little... wait, and you're like, wait, what? And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. he did get to see her. So like, the movie introduces this like kind of like uh kind of a fib to like kind of like build up that moment because you're like well they're not going to see each other but then they do and you're like whoa they actually did get to see one another and so you're kind of like emotionally brought in onto into the conflict of like will they won't they even though you're well i was told that and then they do but then he's gone you're like oh that like shots at the beginning of the movie are like it was like uh almost like a cold open and it was like uh in, in media res where it's like you saw the end of the movie and you didn't realize where you were looking mm-hmm. um it's an, it's an interesting thing and i mean it's very um i don't know cuz it's like at the end of the day he could have been uh anything else he could have been uh he could have gone on to solve something or been a scientist or a worker but instead he is only a soldier but he was a russian soldier um, Comrade, and it's like, and it echoes the uh, end of uh, the cranes are flying, where you get mm-hmm. uh, his uh, his buddy giving the big speech about like, hey, we we need to honor the dead because they are allowing it so that we never have to fight a war ever again. Which of course obviously worked out to be true. We've never fought a war since 1945 anywhere in the world. Um, are you sure? Um, well, I mean, why what would about the, the why war would, at why, home? Why would the movie lie or the war on Christmas? Mm-hmm. Um, what, why would these things uh, be? So anyway, yeah, like there's this like there's like that r- Russian propaganda element to the films, yeah, uh, which are fine, I guess, because like everyone was making these movies and uh, had these same ideas, and like these movies, like I think, are both examples that there's a little bit more freedom in making these films because of like their expression to them, and like mm-hmm. you, you don't know if necessarily the writers and directors were like totally on board with these sentiments. They were just kind of like, hey, we're gonna throw those in because that's they're supposed to be rousing kind of films, but they're gonna have this like layer of humanity to them uh, that like kind of says, well, we don't ne- we, we, we're still talking about like how awful it is to like for 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 the human conditions side that. Uh, yeah, war's horrible, and it ends lives, and it's like not fair. But mm-hmm. hey, lots of people's lives are on the line. And so the other thing too is like, um, thing again, back to cranes are flying. Is you get the thing of like the, the worst thing that you could do in this society during war is to be a hussy, to be a woman. Because mm-hmm. that, that's one of the other stories, that, uh, one of the side stories I, I forgot to mention uh, in uh, kind of my recap summary is uh, on his way to catch the train, he kind of gets like his Jeep gets stuck in like a, a bog of water and some soldiers are walking by and the guys like, hey, where are you yeah. going? Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Tell my wife uh, that I love her. I, oh, I, I think about her every night. Oh, hey, get her, get her, get her some soap. Yeah, get her some meat mm-hmm. and some soap from like uh, the CEO. Oh, I'm like, well, okay, fine. So he hauls this <laughs> stuff. He takes a special trip off uh the beaten path to like go to make make good on his word which is like crazy because like when i watch Mm -hmm. that scene i'm always like you know i tell people i want to do things and i fully intend never to do it and but like when i watch these movies finally admitted it but when i watch movies where they're like i'm gonna do this i go are they really like why don't you just like why don't you just Mm -hmm. blow them off and say yeah 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 sure dude and then like later on go yeah sorry man i i was too busy i had to catch a train and be somewhere because that's what mm-hmm. most people do nowadays. But in these one, I kind of like idyllic kind of sentimental movies, you're like, oh no, he actually went and like took time out of his schedule to go do this thing that like gets him no net benefit. It's just like, no, that's the right thing you do because it's old times, uh, and not cynical hatred for my fellow neighbor times. Um, and yeah, you get the big reveal of like, oh, hey, she's uh, shacked up and uh, is living pretty comfortably and kind of moved on beyond that. And uh, so I was watching this with Chanel at the time, and she was kind of like, well, it's kind of bullshit to be like kind of that kind of weird slut shaming thing of like, because mm-hmm. it's like she's in a really horrible situation too, where it's like, who's looking after her? And I'm like, well, that's the thing with the, the attitude between this and Cranes Are Flying is that it's like, hey, we're all in this together. 
We all got to make sacrifices. We can't be just thinking about like, oh, how am I going to eat? It's like, hey, we're all thinking about that. And sure enough, it's like, if you trust your fellow countrymen, they'll take care of you. You don't need to go like uh, bang some other dude just because your main squeeze isn't around. Um, and just because you want to like, you know, have a little bit of shelter or food. And so Battle of Soldier, it kind of like shows, hey, this lady's like no good. And like that's, it beats you down with that. Cranes are flying though. You get the flip side where it's like, well, she kind of didn't get, pick this situation on her own. She kind of, you know, mm-hmm. was raped. And uh, so it's like a completely different thing. But that sentiment, like there's a scene where like um, the doctor father, he's like giving that big speech about just like how horrible some women are who mm-hmm. like would go behind and stuff like that. It's like, she's not even worth your time. You're soldiers and like, you're going to like, oh, you're going to do great and you're doing a great thing. And these women aren't even worth it. I spit on them. They're, they're worse than scum. And so both mm-hmm. movies kind of like handle it. Uh, in this kind of similar but different way. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's almost uh, unfortunate that these movies weren't back-to-back because, like, I mean, there's an obvious, like, compare-contrast between the two. Well, it's it's funny that you say that, where it's like the person gets put in a bad position and then they kind of get piled on where it's like, yeah, you're the bad one. Where there are these things, there are these parallels to real life where you have this movie podcast with your friend and you make a comment one time about the cinematography and then you get berated about how you, not only are you wrong, but you should feel wrong and you should feel bad because you're at, you're the bad person here. Like your loved one went off. You made that comment on the podcast. You were the wrong one. Do you understand, Jarrett? Do you understand what I'm talking about here? Your best friend liked it. <laughs> Well, he probably understands. And when he hears this <laughs> podcast tomorrow, he'll know what's going on. I just thought I should say that. But yes, I agree uh, with a lot of the things you were saying. And these <laughs> should have been double headers because there are many parallels to each other and things to com- compare. Because Cranes Are Flying was sad and a bummer. And Ballad of the Soldier was a little bit nicer. It was a nicer movie. Like me. These movies are perfect and anal- out like <clears throat> perfect things for you and me. There's a real nice version that's like kind of sweet and you you're rooting for it. and then there's this one version that just like shits all over you and then forces itself upon other people at all the, at every <laughs> opportunity. Uh, so war, man. No, oh, man. What is it good for? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So, uh, yeah, uh, by the way, I thought this movie was good. Yeah. Regardless of uh, any conversations we've had that are now recorded for history. That's right. But, uh, yeah, this is a this is a pretty good show. It's pretty good. Pretty good show. But you know what, RJ? Yep. There's some people who dislike this movie. I won't say hate. Just dislike? I think it's just because so few, few people have really seen it. Even though it's like 2.2 thou or whatever. Yeah. Yep. 2,200 people have logged it, but mm. some two and a half stars coming our way. Mm. Pink sheets, two yeah. and a half stars. Executed mostly fine, aside from some iffy editing at points. It does well by its theme, even if that theme is not particularly original. <laughs> this film <laughs> simply evoked nothing in me. Perhaps I am just not as receptive as I should be, but at no point was I slightly captivated, unfortunately. Hmm, unfortunate. Their originality, uh, they have a lot of Star Wars movies in their top five. But also, so they got like some movies that are pretty good. Harry Kiri, I think you talked about uh, liking. Twin Peaks, you got Rosemary's Baby, Sunset Boulevard, Mulholland Drive. But here's the thing, Jared. Five stars to Inland Empire, the Ooh. unanimous worst <laughs> David Lynch movie of all time. So that's a bad one. Yeah. Mm. Evan Douglas, two and a half mm. stars. Boilerplate propaganda, but who can't get at least a little choked up at a mother son reunion? Hmm. This uh, Evan Douglas is a unique fellow or fellow lady. I don't know what that one is. Uh, they got some favorite films like Seven Sam and The Master. Uh, they also have this movie called Santan Tanjo. Yeah, Satan Tango. Santan Tango. Yeah. Uh, that's come up before on this. Uh, I think this Evan Douglas may be a fan of our show. 
They have five stars to Latra. Uh, they have five stars to Roar, uh, our favorite Ooh. Mayan enthusiastic movie. Uh, but then they have five stars to like Shock Corridor. Mm. That movie's not a five star movie. Nah. But lots of Criterions. Yeah. Lots of Criterions. Well, hi, Evan, if you're listening. If you're listening. Uh, Derp Zerplin. <laughs> Ooh, could you say that again? Derp Zerplin. Nice. Two and a half stars. A movie in which a sentient moral compass dressed as a Russian soldier runs some errands for some people. I'm sure this movie was objectively very good. What do you mean ob- objectively? Like, they're like, well, hey, I, 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 good, I can't. I I, well, like do you want me to answer for derp? Yes. Um, I guess what uh, derp is saying is that they can acknowledge that this movie is probably like objectively a very good movie. They mm-hmm. just didn't it didn't work for them i think is what they're getting at which is like you know what that's fair that that's a two and a half star review uh, yep. I, I don't mind that it's those it's those like half star one star reviews where they mm-hmm. express the exact same thing but you're like i don't think you really understand how uh stars this, this, how how like how one qu- attempts to like quantify their enjoyment of a film mm-hmm. but uh yeah yeah derp zerplin's uh pretty much on the level glenn gary glenn ross Five stars. Uh, Green Room, five stars. However, they did just give Baby Driver four stars. Mm. 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 Well, there you go. Yeah, not too much vitriol. Not very many people watch this. And uh, yeah, yeah, like I said, like very few people uh, I follow have watched it either. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. People should change that around. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a very good movie. Are you into ver- good. are you into good movies? Battle of the Soldier is not a bad way to go. Are you into good shows that have good cinematography, but not maybe not great? Allegedly, mm-hmm. allegedly, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I mean, for Russian uh, propaganda propaganda war movies, it's up there with some of the best. Yep, <laughs> propaganda. Yeah, it's good. Yep. It's but I mean at the same time it's like oh it's propaganda because it's like Russian. And it's like well I don't know. No, it's well yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, I was I saying know, before. Yeah. It, it's mostly like the message they mostly get across. It's like do the moral thing, and then it's like sometimes they connect it to like nationalism. But yes. like yeah, 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 it's it's not it's not that heavy handed. No. It's mostly just hey, don't be an asshole. I, I, I think do most, the right thing. I, I think it's a message that goes beyond national borders. Because they, yeah. they, they don't even drop a lot of, uh, like, Sovietisms that I was aware of anyway. It didn't seem, like, super, like, oh, it's for the greater good. Because it's, like, well, most, like, war efforts are fought oh, on this wars. idea of, like, yeah. the greater good, regard, like, whatever nation you're in. Mm-hmm. It kind of, like, hey, do you like your way of life? Do you, do you want to be uh, controlled by the the German dogs? Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's, like, well, no one, no one wants to be conquered. Um, but then some people wind up doing it. I mean, uh both of us are descendants of conquered people and most people are coming from that at some point in their life. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Always keep going. Anyways. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Well, I think we're in agreement. There you go. Mm -hmm. Can't turn back time. Not today, at least. Yeah. But you can definitely shame people publicly for making comments and then be shown the way of the light mm, you might come to the it's, it's like cinematography you know rj it's like sculpting with light some say Ugh. photography you know oh jared after the break we prepare to die for our country <laughs> 